What's up, everybody? I'm Scott. And I'm Jason. And you just heard Walter fall and snore, uh, but you are listening to Liquid Carnage. Yeah. How are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. Walter is our our famed mascot, uh, it seems, because he's always around you and he always wants to snore during a recording of an episode. So he is now officially the mascot. Yeah, well, I, I do have to tell you that I record in our bedroom, and any opportunity Walt has to go to bed, uh, he takes advantage of. And as it, as it were, uh, he just wants to be petted while he goes to sleep, so that's what snored, causes snoring last week, so I do apologize for that. But also, it's it's part of the charm of what we do here at Liquid Carnage. Wow, you know, and that's, I, I go into my office, and I close the door so that I don't have to deal with that. So, so yeah. uh, you know, win in Rome. Well, you know, that's exactly it. But, you know, uh, it, these these dogs are used to being wherever we are. And normally when I record, uh, it's just me at home. But uh, now that the school baseball seasons have started and I am coaching, uh, we are recording later on in the evening. So um, now I'm in my room just to get uh, more quiet from uh, all the chaos going outside in the regular house. Okay, so for the next few weeks or at least a couple months, we'll probably have to deal with some uh, sound issues that uh, the executive producer will definitely point out. Um, yeah. On um, on at liquid EP. Yeah. yeah. EP. Li- liquid underscore EP. Yeah. yeah liquid yeah. underscore EP. So I mean Twitter and Instagram. Twitter and Instagram. Um, man, both it's... at liquid underscore EP. You butchered that, man. That's rough. Dude, I, I got I got there at the end. I got you there got, at the end. I mean, you landed it. You you landed that that plane. I know, oh, man. It... I missed the quad jump. But then I came back and did a triple toe loop the axle, you know. So I'm good. I'm good. That's very Olympian of you. But I have no it's very Olympian. I kind of butchered that too, but oh man. But you, you know, you are right. Uh, uh, we'll make it work. You know, life throws us out curveballs all the time, so we'll just we'll just roll with it. Um, so I gotta I gotta tell you, I I had a realization o- over the weekend, and oh, wow, okay. it, it was one of those like, huh? I finally get it. So. Growing up, and I'm sure you can attest to this too, uh, whenever we go to my grandparents' house, uh, it seems like my grandpa was always watching old western. Oh, yeah, you know, they uh, yeah. always watch old westerns, and my dad inevitably would watch westerns. And you know, I never really cared for him, um, until Tombstone came out, and, and I enjoyed Tombstone and I enjoyed the occasional western, I, I just never really got into it, you know, yeah, and uh, you know, then, then finally, you know. At, at age 40, I, I finally started watching Yellowstone. I was like, yeah, you know what? I get it. I respect that lifestyle. And I understand that's, it's like, it's the constant story of the man versus the other man versus the elements. And then I started watching 1883. And have you watched 1883? No, I haven't watched it. No. It's basically a prequel to Yellowstone. Okay. It's starring uh, Sam Elliott, Tim McGraw, and Faith Hill. It's on Paramount Plus. And it's the story of the Dutton family from Yellowstone and how they left Tennessee uh, to take the Oregon Trail uh, up to Montana, where their their ranch is in modern day. So it's the story of uh, survival on the frontier that then they come across. And it is fascinating. I love Sam Elliott, number one. I mean, he's such a great, you know, cowboy character actor. Yeah. Uh, but I got to tell you, man, Tim McGraw and Faith Hill really surprised me in that show, too. But I just find myself watching more Westerns now. It's like this is like I get it. The older you get, you just like you appreciate the, the way of the cowboy, which is a very quiet life. Well, and uh, my my father in law, um, there's a channel on cable called Grit, G-R-I-T, Grit. And uh-huh. it basically plays nothing but old Western TV shows. Um, oh wow! And movies, old Western movies, old Western TV shows, and he has it on pretty much all night. Um, and you know, he most of the time it's background noise, but sometimes he actually watches the the you know the movie. Um, you know, sits up close and kind of listens and watches the TV show or watches the movie. And you kind of, it's kind of like um, oh, I'm trying to think of an example of like daytime soaps. Yeah, you don't think that you're going to watch days of our lives but then you watch one and you're just kind of like wow huh okay yeah, you get and then after it. two episodes you know exactly what everything's going on and all the characters uh and that's what these westerns were i mean like you watch uh gunsmoke or you watch the um uh the, there's one that's called the rifleman where guys kind of like i'm going to be the good guy for the little people against the bad guys you know yeah. and, and the lines are very cleanly drawn about who's a good guy 
and who's a bad guy. You know, it's interesting you mention that because I think a lot of people don't realize that uh, there's another very popular show that is disguised as a Western. You just wouldn't know it because of the genre it actually is. And that's The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. The Mandalorian is very much a Western. Okay. It's a lone gunman that travels yeah. his own. And, you know, he, he's, he's, he's trying to take down the man in black one way or the other, trying to do the right thing. And it's very interesting because it's, it's John Favreau created that. And uh, he's doing a very good job of the Star Wars universe. Like, I love what he does. And he's got the Book of Boba Fett out right now. And that is in the same universe and they interact. But that is very much a mafia style show. Oh, that one is yeah. Western. Okay, yeah. Okay, so yeah. It, it, two very different styles, but two, but they're interconnected. So to me, it's just very interesting. But I think a lot of people don't realize is that all the Mandalorian is is a good old fashioned western. Okay, and there's a definite good guy and there's a bad guy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah. You know, the writer on he's the lone gunman. He's the yeah. lone bounty hunter gunman. He's 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 a modern day intergalactic Clint Eastwood. I, I just got done watching two documentaries. One was on World War II. One was on the Vietnam War. Uh-huh. And um, it was striking about that generation that there was, in World War II, there was just a definite, these are the bad guys and we're the good guys. Yeah. Right? It, it was very easily defined. That's probably why they made tons of World War II movies because you could get behind the good guys and you can't, support the bad guys right yeah um versus in vietnam throughout the war the minds of that time were saying we are fighting for the wrong side yeah we should be fighting for the people who want independence not for the corrupt regime um of of south vietnam and so there is no clear delineation of who the good guys are and who the bad guys are in this in the political sense and I think that that's why old guy, old people from that generation love those kind of corny shows where, you know, the, the cowboy comes up and, you know, he doesn't want to disgrace or, you know, embarrass the young woman. So he tries not to swear and spit in front of her. The old lady, he walks across the dirty road to get across, you know, because so, so, those are what good things do. Good so people do that, is, right? Those shows, in a sense, remind them of of what they deemed as a more wholesome time, yeah. Than, than what we than the gray, the shades of gray that we have been living in for a very long time. Yeah, I mean, it definitely seems like there's a definite delineage in pe- in old older people, the older generation's mind. This is right, and this is wrong, and there is yeah. no gray area. It's that clear cut. Um, whereas we obviously have been able to skew or increase the size of the gray area between what is right and what is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. It seems like it's uh, the world today. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I don't know, I I had an experience happen to me yesterday. So I go out to go check the mail and I have to walk. It's not a, it's not like our mailbox is in one of those uh, multi mailbox units where you go down and everyone shares it well as i'm walking back a guy pulls up and he asks me a question he goes hey do you know of any homes for rent no i don't know of any homes for rent well do you live around here yeah i live around here well can i talk to you for a few minutes i'm like oh god and i know and and i'm prefacing this by saying we've done this podcast before about neighbors need to yeah mind 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 their shit right but anyways he starts talking to me he pulls into my driveway he goes hey look i'm a i'm a war veteran from afghanistan i've just gotten home we moved from san diego to phoenix and i need um i haven't found a place to rent but i have a trailer do you mind if i park my trailer in, in, next to your house for a couple weeks That's i'm sorry fun. who are you again well i'm old, i'm sorry my name is this and this is you know this is our story and can i park my trailer next to your guys' house i said well just that's just odd to me right yeah then he switches and you know he says, "Hey, look, okay, if you, if you if you can't do my trailer, can I borrow some money?" Okay, so then I say, "Okay," so I'm thinking, "Okay, let, let me help this guy out." So I say, "Well, what do you, what are you talking about? Like, how much are you talking about?" Oh, five hundred dollars. Wait, I went, uh, so no. so this guy just, just randomly by happenstance pulls up, starts talking. He tries to get you to park his trailer in your yard for a for few two, for a couple of weeks for a couple and, of weeks 
or if that won't work for you, give him $500 to help him out. Yeah. And I said, look, I don't have that kind of cash. I don't have $500, but I will give you $200 because I have $200. Oh, well, can't you give me 500 Wow. Uh, guess look a gift horse in the mouth. But I'm thinking to myself, you know what, Jason? You have $200. You can give that guy 200 bucks. I mean, a complete stranger gives you 200 bucks. Hey, be thankful and move on your way, right? Mm-hmm. So I say, okay. So I go to the bank. He follows me to the bank. I get my $200. I give him $200. And I wish him well. He goes, hey, get, get, let's exchange phone numbers. I promise to pay you back. I already know he's not going to pay me back, right? But I'm thinking, okay, whatever. So exchange phone numbers. I'm wondering where – I'm trying to do a good thing here. I'm trying to be helpful. I'm trying to be a good person. Yeah. And yet all I have is this nasty taste in my mouth about this whole situation. Yeah. And and I know that most people are going to listen and say, wow, you're just a fucking idiot. Or Sorry, you're a frigging idiot because you did this. Um, I kind of equated to if, if, if a homeless person came up and I had $200 in my wallet, I said, you know what, here, just have $200. But it kind of made me kind of sick. Like I'm, I'm trying to be the good cowboy, right? I'm trying to be the good Western cowboy, help, yeah. to help of someone in a family in need. And I'm so, I just feel like I got raped or something. I feel like yeah. I got not raped, bad terms. I got robbed. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I know there's people out there and they do the nicest things all the time without even questioning. I'm not that person. I, and I, I'm frustrated because I've been sick about it all day. Like, why did I do this? I, I just, it's not that I needed the $200. I mean, it would have been nice to have $200. I didn't need it. But on the other side, it's like, yeah, but I don't why being a good Samaritan should make you feel good. And I don't feel yeah. good about this at all. Well, okay. Well, a few things. My my two cents as as your your friend, your co-host, and, and my confidant and foot soldier. Confidant, Go ahead, yeah. my friend. Um, one one, it's you're right. You you have the right mentality, realizing you're never going to see that money again. Uh, two, I I think the fact that you you had the ability to give him something. Uh. And you weren't worried about like, oh, well, what, what is, is it going to pay this bill? The bill you had it, you had it banked anyway. That's a plus for you. So you know you can equate it to like you said, the homeless person, or if you'd have gone and played blackjack, you that's the money you would have used. You right. Know, so okay. N- no harm, no foul. Um, I'll be honest with you, I would have taken issue with you pull up to my you pull up to my house, you're bothering me, you ask if you can leave your trailer. And I say no. Then you ask for five hundred. I said no, but I can do two. And then you get pissy. Yeah. And I'm sure our EP Tom will agree with you on this. It's like, no, you're out, man. I'm done. I'm sorry. I tried to help, but no. Yeah. No. I mean, and, and 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 I think I get really, I get a little jaded when, um, when their argument for me helping them is, well, I'm a good Christian family. Yeah. Well, then why aren't you not at your church then? Yeah. You know, the other from help from your 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 neighbors and the people who you know. And your pastor and you know why are you not talking to them why are you talking to complete strangers pulling up to someone's house when they're going to get their mail like the other the other side that that i just think is odd if you okay if you're playing the war veteran card you just moved from san diego with your family i would assume that you're if you didn't your family would do the homework on trying to find some kind of um rental property in phoenix if that's where you're going <laughs> excuse me so the other thing i, I have that- to ask is you're a 19 year veteran. You have no money. Like yeah. what the hell have you been doing? You should have a ton of money. You should be retired. You know? Well, that's the thing. If he's 19 years, why didn't he stick around for the last year to get yeah. that, that full? I mean, there's, there's a lot of holes in that story that maybe looking back, you see, but you know, uh, it's, it's maybe not as prevalent at the time where ultimately, you know, you might have a bad taste in your mouth, but you can at least in your mind, tell yourself that, you did the right thing trying to help and you didn't break yourself by doing it. Um, you didn't break the bank by doing it. Um, it's just, he probably handled it a little poorly, maybe out of fear, desperation or what have you. But, um, 
I, I don't think you'll ever see that money again. Yeah, and, and I mean, I, I I gave him my number, but I I I know I'm not going to see it again because people people who would give the money back they don't even approach me like that. Just yeah. randomly, some guy walking to get his mail, you know? Yeah. It's just very odd to me. So I, um, I don't know. I had my good Samaritan story. I'm thinking, so where do you draw the line as a good Samaritan? I mean, you know, where do you say I'm willing to do this, but I'm not willing to do that. And is there a, well, tisk tisk cause you didn't do that, but it's okay that you, you know, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I feel like uh, there was a time 80 years ago where a homeless person would come in and people would bring them on the farm and feed them. Well, they put them to work and they'd earn their yeah. keep. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, but it, I mean, you know, and people would, would do that all the time. And I just, we just live in a different time now. I feel dirty. I feel like, wow, that, you know, I, I should have just said, F, you know, F you get the hell off my property, but. Well, you don't you don't have to be that direct with it, but you know, there's there's nicer ways to politely send them along their way, you know. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, so that was my. And, you know, we were talking about westerns. I'm thinking, yeah, you know, a family comes over, they're hard on their luck. I want to help them, you know. And then I just feel like you didn't seem very thankful. You didn't seem very grateful. You you kind of you were pissed that I didn't give you more. And it's like, dude, I don't even know you. Yeah, you know, if, I don't even give my friends five hundred dollars, right? Like, like, what are you now, talking about? Now I know you're good for at least two, no matter what. So, <laughs> yeah, you're always two. Yeah, exactly. If you need a place to stay, I'll give you two hundred bucks. <laughs> two hundred bucks worth. That's it. That's it. You know, but uh, you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that he is living a a life rule that we had from our younger days, our wilder days, where fifty knows and yes is still yes. So, uh, there's a chance that. You were not the first person he approached that day. Uh, you're just the first person to give him some cash. Yeah, and, and and yet, I mean, I mean, part of me, part of me does believe his little story. I mean, part of me believes it, um, you know. But it's also like, oh God, is this what people resort to now? Like strong arming someone to give him some money? I mean, come on. Like, yeah, I mean, that, that's, get that's a life what... like the rest of us. Like, I have a job. I, I pay my mortgage. Like, wh- why can't you just do it like the rest of us? Why do you have to do this? Yeah. Like, just God, that's a conform, little conform, conform. That's a little bold. And I guess the other side I'm looking at too is like, listen, if you you're looking for a place to rent, and you have no idea that there's nothing available, um, and then you have to borrow money. Even if there was a place to rent, you don't have the money to pay for that. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, so, and I, I guess that would have been my. My question also is like, well, if you can't, if there's no places to rent, um, you know, why are you asking to borrow money? I mean, because is this a hotel or what is this? But I can't help you. I'm sorry. Well, and and that's my thing is, I mean, for two hundred dollars, you probably could have got a couple weeks at a RV park. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was my thought was, hey, this this could get you a couple weeks in an RV park, and then you're not staying on my house, you know? So yeah. I'd be, I I am curious to see if you if you ever come across this gentleman again. I don't think you will, but I am an eternal pessimist when it comes to things like this. And 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 I think this is the part about being a good Samaritan that that, that does frustrate me. It's like if you if you're doing it on your terms, there is a difference than doing it because you're feeling forced or guilted into it and you just want to get rid of the guy. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of this most of this is my fault. I should yeah. have just said no. I you you need to leave. I I don't know who you are. I don't trust what you're. You know I don't trust this scenario, and I don't want to be involved in it. Yeah, I'm getting red flags from it. It doesn't sound like a good deal to me. And you know if you're if you are such a good church person, then you should be able to go to your church and you should be able to get whatever you need from them. Man, you're hard. Um, and like you I just, know you are. You are literally. Uh, you did the right thing. I think at the end of the day. I mean, well, how about this? I mean, I, I guess. You know, do we do good Samaritan deeds so that we feel better? Probably, because you and I have done the co- Toys for Tots um, shop a thon. Yeah, and there were a few of those people that they weren't appreciating what we were doing. They, you know, were taking advantage of what we were doing. You know, so we did it because we felt better. So I'm going to chalk this up as 
I'm going to feel better about it and just be, you know, say whatever you, if you suckered me, then that's okay. I'll feel better about it. But yeah, um, the other part of me is like, Oh, come on, dude. Like, man, well, if it makes you feel better though, like and we, we talked about this in pre-production there, uh, I, I did start coaching middle school baseball today. So um, nice. I, I, you speak a good Samaritan, you know, it, it is, it is a paid position, but it's not, it's nothing worthwhile pay wise you know it's it's a small stipend that i i feel like that they should probably use toward equipment and and uniforms but it's not it's neither here nor there uh, but some of these kids you realize they need you know structure and 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 i think someone to be a little hard on them to maybe get their shit together to see if they're gonna get their shit together if they're gonna be a failure in life and that sounds a little rough to say, but you know what I mean? Like these, these kids in, in middle school are getting to that breaking point where they're, they're either going to break bad or they're going to start trying to figure out how to get their lives together a little bit, you know? So I guess this, this team has not won in a couple of years. So, oh no. Okay. Um, oh, it, is, it is literally a bad news bears situation where we're just trying to, we're just trying to get these kids to play. And, you know, and I talked to the, to the head coach, it's JP uh, today. It's like, you know, we, we can try to coach them to win, but I think it's better at this point that we just coach them to uh, try to get them a, a little more self-confidence in themselves going into high school. I think that's going to see, that's going to do them a whole lot better than trying to win games and only certain kids play certain games, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ultimately you never know, maybe you'll be the, that, you know, that glorious story of the kid who, you know, makes it good and then he says what turns your life around and he says oh man when i had coach kern on my baseball team back in middle school i knew that that you know we all had that dream that that's what's gonna you know change uh you know that our good deed is gonna have that kind of impact and yet well, the reality is never does we never find that out yeah i'm just I'm, I'm just saying that you know for as far as like small miracles day one i uh i didn't drop an f-bomb so i i believe that's good Wow, I believe that's a start. These these kids haven't driven me to that level yet, but there's still two more days of tryouts before the actual team shows up. So, I'm trying to just be the assistant coach because that's what I am. I am letting uh, Coach Pemberton uh, take take the reins, take the wheel, and, and drive this. Okay, and I am going to do the best I can to do that before um, ultimately my yelling kicks in and I can't stand the kids and need to get them to start doing more things. Like yeah, listen, okay, when we, listening when we tell them to run or understanding situational baseball. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I, I mean, you're doing a very good thing. Um, and I don't know what, what kind of time commitment is it, is it taking from you? It's four days a week from uh, basically four fifteen to five thirty. So the way I figure is, you know, at the time when I took the job, Denise was working till six most nights. It wasn't a big deal. Uh, but she said switch jobs. So she's home a little bit earlier. Yes. But still I'm done at three, three thirty most days. So, um, I can get off work, do what I got to do, get changed to get over there. I can still make the gym. So it's, it's, it's some time commitment, but literally the way I see it, it's, it's taking time away from my beer drinking, which isn't the worst thing in the world for me right now. <laughs> so I can be more productive with it. And it's funny. Uh, I have a friend, uh, a very good friend that I drink with all the time. I, I told her like, Hey, just so you know, the next two months, um, You're by I've, yourself. Got, I've got baseball practice, uh, from this time to this time, Monday through Thursday. Because we always meet my parents on Thursday too for for drinks and oh yeah okay. and, and, and it's it's my friend Dean and she's like well I guess it's good that you got this practice because it means that maybe I'll drink a little bit less too so I mean it's you find the you find life's silver linings yeah and maybe that's that's the other thing too I mean some people are the kind of good Samaritans where they'll give up everything of theirs for other people you know that's yeah. for whatever reason they get their joy out of you know, giving up their home and, you know, taking kids in when they need a place to stay. I mean, there are some really giving people. And, you know, I think, I think that I just learned about myself that if I do it on my terms, I'm perfectly fine. As soon as I get outside of my terms and I'm doing it on someone else's terms, it just makes me sick. It makes oh, it just, yeah. you know, so I learned a valuable lesson about, you know, the, the being good and trying to be charitable and, um, you know, just, Hey, do it on your terms. If you, if, you know, and maybe that's why I was able to give them 200 is, you know what, if I have to be in this situation, I am willing to help you. I'll give you $200 and that should yeah. be it. Uh, and if he had been, Oh my gosh, thank you so much. You know, or gave me a sense of you, you have no idea 
how much that'll mean to us, maybe it would have been a different experience. So how much yeah. of a good Samaritan uh, requires the person who's getting the charity to be really, really, really thankful and show it? Uh, I, I think at least some acknowledgement <laughs> of gratitude goes a long way for that, you know. I'm willing to give up anything for charity as long as you're really, really thankful and you show me how thankful you are. Well, I just think I think some gratitude, not just like, well, why can't I have five? You're going to give me two. That's a whole different attitude. And that to me, that would have changed the entire uh, complexion of the of the uh, of the interaction. But that's that's me. And I'm a little bit more uh, dickish than you are in this case. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but that's okay though. That's okay. So what are you doing for the Super Bowl, my friend? Uh we are actually hosting this year. We What? We hosting, yeah, we are it's been a couple years, so we are, Janice wanted to host and I figured, okay. I mean we were supposed to host last year, but um, we did have my 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 fortieth birthday the evening before. So we were in no oh, condition God, to host right. uh last year. So uh she wants to go ahead and do it this year. <clears throat> so we're preparing food and uh, the the side bets and all that, and I'm trying to explain her oldest who will be with us because the youngest will be with her dad. You know, she was telling me she's very excited about the Super Bowl, but she has no idea what it is. So she, we're we're driving home the other night. She goes, "I have a very busy weekend next weekend." I said, "I've got a part birthday party and a sleepover, and then we've got the Super Bowl." And I'm like, "Oh," so I said, "I looked at it, I was like, what are you bringing for the Super Bowl?" She goes, "Well, what do you mean?" I said, "If you're going to a Super Bowl party, you got to bring something." That's 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 the only right thing to do. She goes, "Well, I'd live in the house we're having it in." It's like, yeah, yeah. So, okay. <laughs> it's like, what does that mean to anything? I got three goldfish. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the look on her face, like, and then she really racked her brain about it, and she was like, "Oh, okay." I was like, "She's like, well, I'll bring Doritos." Like I said, we already have somebody that brings Doritos. So, like, you got to step your game up here, kid. Like, this is like like the, the day to like bring your best food game and her her family's from louisiana so this, this morning as we were getting ready for her i guess it was last night as, as we were wrapping up dinner she goes i think i'm gonna make and i forget what it was but it's, it's some southern dish and it's it's basically it's a soup and her mom looked at it and said well do you know how to make that or does mima know how to make that she goes well mima does but i've watched her i was like is mima gonna make this or are you gonna make this she goes well i will and I, I had to stop her and say, all right, well, here's the deal with the Super Bowl. There's always a lot of food. You don't have to get super fancy. You can just bring a side. So bake some cookies. We'll help you. Or just, you know, I'm just, we're just giving her a hard time. And she's really racking her brain. And then she looks at me and goes, well, are the Cardinals playing in it? And I said, no. Oh, I said, no. And then she goes, well, is, is LSU playing in it? Because she's from Louisiana. Her family yeah. loves LSU Tigers. I said, no, right. but there are Tigers playing in it. So, you know, you can go for them. But it was just it was it was it was a a fun interaction teaching a a ten year old uh, about Super Bowl Sunday. And that was about her age when I started paying attention to the Super Bowl. Okay, yeah, there we go. All right. And, and I told her, like, "Well, bring cash because you could win some money, but you could lose some money too." Yeah, and, yeah, you could win, but you could also lose. She looked at me and she goes, "Is this like uh, one of the Harry Potter movies where the Weasley twins you know, were taking bets on a Quidditch match?" Yeah, and, and their mom got mad. I said, "Yeah." But in this case, like your parents understand that you're you're betting money, and we're the ones you're betting with. So I have no problem taking your money if you lose. <laughs> and wow, <laughs> we kind of went from there. So anyway, so yeah, so we're we're hosting, and yeah, you know, we got people. My parents are coming over because uh, my friend Dean is bringing her fiance Charlie, who they who they've never met. They just think he's fictional, so uh, they they wanted to come meet him, and he was supposed to give me some elk backstrap to um. Uh, to to do something with, you know. So I was gonna figure out. I was gonna make some bulgogi elk uh, beef tacos. And this evening, before we started recording, I got I got an email or a text from from his fiance Dean, and, and that said, "Elk is out. We're giving you a backstrap of deer or of bear. I'm sorry. Figure out how to cook the bear." So I, I am now scrambling to figure out how to how to cook a backstrap of bear meat uh, for the Super Bowl as as one of our sides. So we'll have beef barbacoa, pork chili verde, um, you know, snacks, and now how are I figure out how to cook bear? Okay. Yeah. There we go. There we yeah. go. Yeah. What are you guys doing? Uh, so we are going to be traveling. Um, we're going to be traveling at the Super Bowl. Uh, we're, we're going out of town to work uh, remotely. 
in uh, in Tennessee, and um, and uh, as a result, we are going to have to find our way. So we'll either be at a um, we'll either be at a um, hotel. Or we'll, I think there was a couple um, Super Bowl parties that were in the downtown area that we might try to, to watch the game at. Uh, normally, we are up in Vegas with our friends, Brittany and Adam. Uh, they rent a table at an outdoor kind of sitting park area. Yeah. And they have a big screen TV and food trucks and beer gardens. And it's usually that's what we were supposed to do this weekend or this year. But because the Super Bowl was one week later, we had a scheduling conflict. So we decided uh, to do our trip there. So, eh, well, it, it works. I mean, it'd be a good experience to try something new anyway. Yeah. So, so that's what we're doing. Um, you know, obviously, I have a little bit of skin in the game this year. Uh, but, you know, every game of the playoffs, I've not been confident with the Rams winning. Uh, this game is no exception. I'm not confident the Rams are going to uh, win this team. I think this team is just uh, the Cincinnati team is just destined. So I, I'm not going to be surprised or upset if they lose. Cause I, I just, I get the feeling that once again, they just ran into a team that was destined to to do it. So. Well, I, I, I gotta tell you, I, I'm, I'm a big Burroughs and Jamar Chase fan. They, they helped me in one of my fantasy leagues all season. So um, by default also, since they're playing a, a division rival, yeah. um, I am I am all orange and black this weekend. Go Joe. Um, okay, there you go. There you go. Yeah. I mean the only the only hope I have is that the defensive line will actually put some pressure on Joe Burrows. Well, if they put pressure on Joe Burrows, then it could be like for example, Tennessee sacked him nine times, held yeah. him to sixteen. Points. Tennessee put one nine. touchdown. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and if they can hold Joe Burrows to nine sacks with one touchdown. We will win that game. Yeah, we will win that game. Well, if it, that can't happen, then uh, you know, then it, obviously it, nobody's found a way to stop Cooper Cup yet. Uh, no, and every every week for the last ten weeks, they've been saying you got to stop Cooper Cup, and the guy still gets wide open. I mean, when you make a when you can make a quadruple cut and free yourself from a defender you're going to get the ball. We have a quarterback now that can get the ball to him before we had with all due respect, Jared Goff, who, if you're not, if you're more than 10 yards down the field, he's not getting you the ball. He's not yes, getting sir. to you. That's so, fair. So, so are, are we going to have a, a friendly liquid carnage bet for the Super Bowl? or I think we should. Maybe we should, since we both know that. Okay. That's it. What, what, what's our bet going to be? Um, I, would you care to do a simple bottle of whiskey? Yes. Or, Let's just or, do it. Okay. A, okay. A, a, a bottle of whiskey. What's the dollar limit? Um, fifty dollar limit. That's still a decent whiskey. Fifty dollar limit. Okay. All right. You know that sounds good. We'll take the okay. rant. I'll take the Bengals straight up. Oh, you want to do straight up? Okay. Yeah, All we're right. not taking. We're not doing points or anything. We're right? not doing points. Okay. We'll, we'll All right. Straight up. You heard it here first. Um, we will be able to do the podcast next week, um, and uh, and we will know who's getting drunk on the other person or not. Yeah, the other person's dime, and we will celebrate. Uh, the spring when we come down to visit. That sounds great. That sounds great. Uh, so as we wrap up the show, um, have you had a good Samaritan moment where you felt a little icky afterward, like you didn't do the right thing or you tried to do the right thing and, and it blew up in your face? Or, or what would you have done differently than Jason would have done? We want to hear about it. Hit us up. Let us know. Uh, it's Liquid Carnage at Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, if you have any Super Bowl tips for cooking for Tom, I'm not sure what he's doing for it up in Denver, but Hit him up at liquid underscore EP on what he should bring to his Super Bowl party if he's going to one. 